Hello my friends, welcome to my channel once again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create realistic mockups all by yourself inside of Affinity Studio, just like this. And of course, at the end of this video, I have an extra tip to create a nice composition out of this. If you've not subscribed, now is the right time to subscribe and turn on post notifications so that you get notified when I post a new video. Without having to say much, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm using 1920 by 1080 pixel document. So I'm going over to my resource file. This resource file that I used is in the link on this description, description of this video so you can download them and use them. So I'm just going to make this smaller like this. And um, of course I can rotate this, but then of course I like the way this is positioned. So what I want to do next is make it bigger, right? Let's just make this bigger. All right, so this is step one. Step two, I'm just going to bring in what I'm going to use as my design on this soda can which is this you can see it's a design in itself so i'm just going to make this smaller the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to rotate this to fit the image i'm going to use it for rotate this um i'm not necessarily doing any heavy tweaking what i'm just going to do i'm just going to make sure i turn the pasty down so i can see the image below and what i'm going to do next is i'm going to move this upward so hold down your shift and take this up so that it covers the entire soda itself, right? So I'm just gonna leave this like this. And um, now this is step two. So as you can see, I have some of the details outside, like the new is outside. So you might want to want to bring this inside by holding down shift, depends on your image that is in for this mock-up, right? For mine, I'm just gonna leave things like this and uh, yeah. So the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to go over so that I can edit this image later. I'm going to change it to a linked document. So go over to document and go to resource manager, right? Selecting the image. So over here, you have two things. You have the soda and you have the image. So this is what we are focused on. Now it's on embedded. So I'm going to make it linked, right? So make it linked like this. And I'm going to close this up like this, right? So this step is very, very vital to what we are actually going to achieve here. So step three is masking out the soda. So I'm just going to use my pen to make sure I have only just the outline and no fill color. So I'm just going to mask out the outline like this. So I'm just going to go around it, gently selecting and highlighting the edge of the soda like this. So I'm just going to speed this up here. Okay, so you want to zoom close in some areas so that you can um, get the entire shape well, right? So I'm just holding down my space bar to pan around like this and zooming in and zooming out my scroll wheel. So if you don't know how to zoom in and zoom out with your scroll wheel, I have a video on that that I did previously. So you can watch that video to learn how you can change your settings and you can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse if you're using a mouse. So I'm going to finish this up here by adjusting this one on top here like this. And... Um, like this, like this. I'm just going to finish this up this way. And over here, over here, and I'm just going to end this here. Boom. Okay, so when you've done this, the next thing you should do is, you can see I have, have a selection of the soda can, so click on mask. Right? Right, click on mask. You can see that it has removed the other parts we do not need. So click on the image itself now. We can now bump this up. Now it's looking weird and it's looking funny. So what you need to do is go over to blend mode, change this to multiply. Right? So leaving this at multiply, what you should do next is to make the highlights come outside and all of that. Click on this PNG, the, the image, and make a duplicate copy of this. Right? And take it up like this. Right? Take this up like this and change the blend mode to screen. Like this. You can see it has made it worse. But no, 
Click on this um, settings here and you want to have the shape. Now, this is the blend if, if you're familiar with Photoshop. This is the blend option inside of Affinity. So what you want it to do is bring this down. And of course, you can see that my highlights are back in areas that I need it. So you can have this funny, you can click on points and of course, adjust them just like this. All right. So I have this funny shape and click X so you can practice because your image might be different from mine. But because I'm using this image, that's my settings. So you can copy my settings. So you can see I have a realistic mock-up, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select, select the three of them and I'm going to group them and I'm going to rename this mock-up, right? So what I'm going to do is let me create an environment for this, my mock-up. I'm going to create a background for this. So select my rectangle tool like this and I'm going to draw the rectangle like this. And of course, I'm going to use my eyedropper to, to sample the color. So drag it out like this and sample the color. Nah, this is bad, but let me leave this. I'm going to sample the color again. Drag it out like this and sample the color from the image you can see. So this is something we can actually work with. Now let's create a realistic 3D lighting based on what we have here. Let's create um, a soft light at the background of this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my brush. Right, so this is the brush here, the pen brush. I'm going to change my foreground color to white. So double click here and you should make this white. Cancel off like this and make your brush bigger. And I'm going to click just once, right? Click just once and I can resize this, make it bigger, change the position. It's flexible just the way you have inside of Photoshop. All right, so having it this way you can also make this bigger like this and i'm going to have my light source here so this is just like my light source so the next thing i'm going to do here is very simple i'm going to create a realistic shadow so i'm going to flip this my foreground is now set to black right click here click here and click here like this click here like this and click here like this to finish off to create a nice shadow so you can use your node tool to adjust the node and um, I, I think this is this is good this is nice so i'm going to have this here so what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to click on the mask and i'm just going to select my brush pen brush and um, of course reduce this a little bit my foreground color is set to black and just um, remove from these areas like this so i have a nice blend from dark to light select the layer itself and go over to light filters go to gaussian glow and add gaussian blur to this make sure you're not doing too much somewhere around here is nice and good and when you're done just click out and you have this going on for yourself so you can change this and um, expand this just the way you want but by default i think i'm happy and i'm good with what i have here Right, so let's um, take this up an extra notch. So um, I can group my background and everything, right? So that we don't confuse ourselves trying to locate what we need to change. Now, before I change the image I used my mock-up, right? I would like to group the background. So select the three of them, Ctrl G to group them, and you can name this BG for background. So what I'm going to do is select my mock-up and I'm going to click on the image. Now, if you did not do the first step of converting this to a linked image, you will not see this. So click on edit image, right? Click on the edit image so you can go over to your library. Let me hide this. Go over to your folder, your library and um, bring in the image that you intend to use. So I'm just going to drag this inside here like this and I'm going to place this here. And I'm going to make it cover my canvas because this is the same diameter and this is the same measurement for my shape. So when I'm done with this, I'm going to press Ctrl S to save and of course, save flattened. And with this, everybody goes home happy. And you can close this up. And when you come back here, this is what you're going to have. You can see how realistic this is. So you can apply these settings to 
any mock-up you want to create, but subsequently I'll be doing t-shirt mock-ups and every other mock-up. Then again, I'm going to sample the color and I'm going to use this color for my background, right? I'm going to use it for the background. And of course, I like spicing up things. Let your creativity run wild. So I'm just going to duplicate this and I'm going to rasterize this, right? So with this one here, I'm going to move it like this and I'm going to rotate this and I'm just going to add, uh, rotate this, make it bigger like this. I think somewhere around here is good. Go to live filter. The first thing I'm going to do is apply motion blur, right? So I'm going to change the direction or the rotation and I'm going to increase the radius. Go back there again and select live filter. And this time I'm going to use Gaussian blur. So I'm going to blow this with this radius. So then again, copy my settings. Click out and I'm going to make several copies of this by holding down the Alt key and dragging or pressing Ctrl G, anyone that works for you actually. So I'm going to have this here and I'm going to rotate this like this. And I'm going to have this one also here like this. And um, Good. I'm just going to have this here. Move this down a little bit. Not too much. I'm going to adjust the Gaussian blow for this. I'm going to add more blow, increase the blow value like this. And um, somewhere around here is good. And at the end of the day, this is what you have. All right, guys, like I said, this technique can be applied to any kind of mock-up you want to create. But subsequently, I'll be posting videos about mock-ups and how you can find your way around them. If you like this video, this is a call to action. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Ciao. With over 1,000 premium fonts, over 100 high-quality PSD flyer templates. Over 700 icons. Over 3,000 premium stock photos. 3,000-plus high-resolution backgrounds. 1,000-plus 3D and PNG assets. Editable PSD templates and lots more. If you're a creative designer, UI, UX, or web designer, the Smart Designer's graphics assets will make your life much more easier.